Hello and welcome to another edition of the Commodore 64 programming series here on Cities Inn. This is Deadline and today we're going to be talking about the PetMate screens. PetMate is a program that you can use on Windows, Mac, or Linux and create Commodore 64 pet ski screens and then we're going to also show you how to use the keyboard to do something like this City Man. okay so let's get started here um, the first thing you want to do is get PetMate if you haven't already got it the website is nerpax.github.io slash petmate and uh, on here you can see there's the Mac OS Windows and Linux downloads and if you're really interested in how it works you can go to their actual github webpage and got all the source code on there but we don't need to worry about that just download this install it and then we can get started I've already installed it. I've already edited some screens, but I wanted to point out a couple of things here while we're um, editing screens. Um, <clears throat> first of all, you'll notice that uh, each one of these uh, screens has a little label down here below it, and that's what we can use in the code because when it exports it to um, kick a similar code this is what it's going to label it as let's say we've already edited our file we go here we export it as a similar source ASM and kick assembler support is built in and there's also Acme and 64 tasks but we're just going to be working with kick assembler Okay, you can choose to um, do current screen only or not. And what that means is, here if you see this plus, you can actually add more screens in here and edit them and it'll save it all to one file. But we don't want to do that, so let's just remove these other ones. We'll do it in the last file. So file, export as, a similar source, kick a similar current screen only, export. And we'll call that screen one ASM. I've already written it, but we'll replace it. Alright. So let's open up the other files that I've edited. Here's my screen two. We want to label it screen two in here. File save so that way the program will reference it as a different screen than the first one if you don't it'll have conflicts so let's export this is a similar click similar current screen only export screen to you yes all right so for the screen three Um, I've made a disk menu uh, screen and that's going to be used in uh, future uh, programming episodes and then the last screen let's add some more stuff to it though before we save it let's add in circle a little circle there um, what else can we do? A diamond shape. Let's do a diamond shape. And we'll, okay, let's recolor that one. Let's color it purple. If you look over here, you can change color only. So let's do that. Okay. And you can also change character only and keep the um, color under there. Let's do a green something. Let's do a green line. 
what? Okay, char and color. Green line. I'll make some grass. It's kind of sassy. Let's make let's make a happy little tree right over here. Happy little tree. And put some leaves on it. Maybe we have some clouds up in the sky. But you get the idea. You can edit it and do whatever. So let's let's save this screen. File save. And then we'll file export this one as assembler. Kick assembler, but now you know we have two screens on this one, so we don't want the current screen only. So let's uncheck that and export that. We'll put it on screen three. Okay. So now we have all four of our screens that we want to use <coughs> in kick assembler code. Let's go ahead and quit out of the Mate screens. So let's take a look at what we've just created here. Okay, so here's our screens. Let's take a look. Now this method is only going to work for 40 by 25 screens. Um, actually, let's take another look at the pet mate. So in the pet mate, you can actually before you create a new screen here, you can actually define the columns and rows in there that it's going to use. So you can do a 10 by 15 for instance. This method that uh, we're going to be using is not going to work in this manner. You're going to have to use 40 by 25 characters in order for it to work just keep that in mind <clears throat> alright so let's take another look at the code here and see what it's doing it puts the label and then the first two bytes are for the border and background colors right and then all the rest of it is the first half is the screen codes and then the last half is for the color codes for the color RAM and same thing for screen 2 and then in screen 3.asm we have disk menu as the label but then we also have last screen as a label too which is down here all right, so all the data you can technically put them all in one file and I could actually copy all this stuff here into screen 3 and dump it all into one file but we're going to keep it as three files all right okay so first thing we want to do do our imports include constants .asm import macros .asm and then import this is a new file and it's going to have the draw pet mate screen Uh, macro that I made which is going to take the data from those screen files and draw them to the screen all right we'll examine that in a minute and then we do our basic upstart basic upstart he said lion what are you doing Go away, Clicky. I'm trying to make a video. Well, I never. 
right? To find the beginning of the screen, so of the program. So it ends clear screen. Remember that's from our macros. Alright. From macros. Okay, so. And then jump so let's make a we're gonna have a, a subroutine. We're gonna write instructions. So I'll print a little message at the bottom of the screen. And the reason why we're putting it in a in a subroutine so we can call it after we draw the screen. <clears throat> Make a main loop label. And um, actually before we get into that, let's take a look at the pet mate macro that I made. Where is it at? Include draw pet mate screen. Right? So, draw pet mate screen. It's going to take in a parameter or an argument, screen name. And then it's going to start by loading the accumulator with screen name. <clears throat> and that's the border color. So, it's going to store it in the border color. And then screen name plus one is your background color. It's going to store it in the background color. It's pretty self explanatory. So then the next thing, we're going to load X with zero. It creates a DPMS loop. That's short for draw pet mate screen loop. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then it's going to start from there. Uh, screen name plus two, comma X. It's going to store those characters at screen memory comma x and then it's going to do the same thing over and over but adding 256 four times that way it only does it does all of the screen in one pass based on one loop right so screen name plus two plus 256 comma x whatever's in your x value it's going to be offset it's going to store it in the accumulator. It's going to store the accumulator. Screen memory plus 256, comma X, and so forth. Once it gets done with that block, it'll do the colors. And we know where it's at. Screen name plus 1000 plus 2. The plus two is to offset the border and background color. The 1000 is to offset the screen codes, all right? So same calculations, except this time we store the accumulator in color RAM. And then increment the X register, branch if not equal, DPMS loop. Does it uh, 256 times. 256 times and then that's it it, it, it uh, falls through and since this is a macro this stuff will be put in line into the program pretty self-explanatory pretty easy too so now we can get to the keyboard input routine so at the main loop Jump subroutine kernel get in. And let's see what kernel get in is. It's in the kernel. So it's down here somewhere. Kernel get in. Where is it? Here it is. Kernel get in. FFE4. Input nothing. Output A. So. It just loads the accumulator. Uh, byte read used registers. X and Y is used for something. Uh, but we're going to be, the only thing we're really going to be concerned with is the A value. All right. So, what we can do here to check 
one hit, make a label, compare with hashtag 31. 31 is the value if the keyboard has a one in it. If the accumulator has a one in it after calling that kernel routine. Wrench of nine equal to check two hit. Right, so it's not equal. But if it is equal, this is what we want to do. We want to draw the pet main screen. And which screen do we want to draw? Screen underscore zero zero one. All right, and we'll jump to subroutine, write instructions. And we'll jump back to the main loop from here. Since we don't need to worry about what else is pressed. Or you could have it go wherever you want. But we want to get out of the, the the checking which key is hit loop. So we're at check two hit. Same thing. Compare hashtag number or number dollar sign 32. That's the value for two. Being branch if not equal to check three hit. Okay, if it is equal though, we want to draw another pet mate screen. Which screen do we want to draw? Screen 002. And then jump subroutine, write instructions. Jump to main loop. There we go, one and two is checking for now. Now we're doing check three, hit. Compare it with, what do you think? 33, branch if not equal. Let's see, check four, hit. If it is equal to three, then we're gonna draw, hit, mate, screen. Which one do you think? Disk, menu, that's right. Jump subroutine, write instructions. That's our subroutine that we're going to write. It's going to write the instructions out. And we only have to write that once. And then we can jump to subroutine multiple times. Jump to main loop. So jump back to the main loop out of the current keyboard checking routine. Okay, check four, hit. Compare it with 34. Branch if not equal. What are we gonna call this? We'll just call it check next key for now. Since we're only checking one through four. But then we wanna draw a pet mate screen. If we did hit four, which screen do we want to draw? The last screen. All right. And jump to routine, write instructions. Uh, what? Just happened. This auto correct. All right, so jump to main loop after that. And, so, We'll make a label here, check next key. Not really gonna do anything with it. Just jump the main loop. And there is our keyboard checking routine. <clears throat> it checks for one, two, three, or four. If one's hit, draws pet mate screen, screen zero, zero, one. Two's hit, screen underscore zero, zero, two. If three is hit, it prints the screen disk menu. And if four is hit, it prints the last screen, uh, pet mate screen. Okay, so final thing we want to do, write instructions, label, I'm gonna load X with zero. Pretty standard fare there. Write instruction loop. Uh, 
Load accumulator instructions, comma X. Branch of Eagle to WI exit. So we're going to store the accumulator at 1988, which is a screen location at the bottom of the screen. And it's going to be centered for what our text is going to say. X, I said. All right. And then we also want to put uh, color into the color ram because the pet main screens are going to draw color also. A store accumulator and the value that corresponds to the screen codes is DBC4, comma X. I've already done the calculations beforehand. That's for color ram, by the way. And then jump to WI loop. And once it hits that zero at the end of our table, it's going to jump out. So W, I exit, return from subroutine. And that is the end of the subroutine. It'll draw our instructions over top of the whatever's on the screen. Final thing, instructions, label, dot text, press one or uh, let's say one through four to change screens. All right. One, two, four. And then dot byte zero. It's our terminator. Pretty easy program. See what it wants. See what it does. Oh, we got an error. So what is the problem? Unknown symbol screen underscore zero zero one. Oh, we need to include the screens. Import screen one dot ASM. Import screen two dot ASM. And import screen three dot ASM. Right, and let's put a label up here, a marker to load. Let's see where should we load it? Two thousand should be fine. Screen screens, yeah, two thousand should should be fine. Let's, let's see what happens. One, two, three. There you go. It's pretty easy. Now, there's one other thing that I wanted to show, and that is if we go into one of these screens, and let's just change the first two bytes. Um, It will actually change the border color and um, background color as well. And let's see. Six and let's go with eight on that one. We'll see what happens. That doesn't look very good. That doesn't look very good. <laughs> well, you get the idea. But I'm gonna change it back to zeros. Well, I appreciate you spending time here, listening to me ramble and do some coding. If you like this video, well, you know what to do. Join us next time when we start looking at disk operations. We're gonna be looking at things like reading the error channel sending commands such as erase a file, loading a file, reading the directory, etc. Until next time, this is Deadline with Cities In.